We are now moving on to our next section, section 1.4, Consequences of Completeness. In this section, we shall discuss some important theorems and results which occur as an immediate consequence of the axiom of completeness. Let's look at the theorem. Theorem is named nested interval property, which states that for each n element of n, assume that we are given a closed interval i n is equal to closed interval a n b n, which is defined as set of all x element of R such that a n less than or equal to x less than or equal to b n. Assume also that each i n contains i n plus 1. Then the resulting nested sequence of closed intervals i1 contains i2, contains i3, contains i4, etc. has a non-empty intersection. That means the infinite intersection of this nested intervals, intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n, is non-empty. That means not equal to 5. So look at the statement of the theorem once again. For each natural number n, we are defining a closed interval i n is equal to closed interval a n b n, which means the set of all real numbers in between a n and b n, including a n and b n. Now we are given that each i n contains i n plus 1. That means i 1 contains i 2, i 2 contains i 3, i 3 contains i 4, like that. So here we get a nested sequence of intervals i1, i2, i3, i4, etc. in such a way that i1 contains i2, contains i3, contains i4, etc. We have to show that the infinite intersection of these intervals, that means intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n, is non empty. We have to show that there exists an x element of i n for all the n element of capital N. For this, we define a set A is equal to set of all A n such that n element of n. So this set consists of all the left hand n points of the interval i n. Remember the interval i n was taken to be closed interval a n b n and this set contains it the set a contains all the a n's. Now we know that as uh, we have i n is equal to closed interval a n b n we know that a n is less than or equal to b n for every values of n. Now since all these intervals are nested that means i1 contains i2, contains i3, etc. We can say that each bn is an upper bound for the set A. Now, we got that A is non-empty and now we got that A is bounded above. Therefore, by the axiom of completeness, A has a least upper bound. Least upper bound means supremum. So, we can say that A has a supremum and we denote that supremum by x. So, let x is equal to supremum of we now consider the particular integral i n is equal to closed interval a n b n. So now just to remind you, we have defined a, a as the set of all a n such that n element of n. And we define the supremum of this set as x. x is equal to supremum of a. Now since x is supremum of a, this means that x is an upper bound for the set a. And from here we will get a n is less than or equal to x. Now, as every bn is an upper bound for the set A, this particular bn will also be an upper bound of this set A. And as x is the supremum, that means the least upper bound of the set A, we will have x is less than or equal to bn. So combining both these, we will get an is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to bn. This means that x is an element of in for all n element of n. So if x is an element of i n for all n element of n, we can say that x is an element of the infinite intersection. Intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n. Since x belongs to all the i n's, it will be an element of in the infinite intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n also. Now this means that this set intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n is non-empty and this proves the theorem. We now have a definition here. Let B is a subset of the set of real numbers. Then we say that the set B is dense in R if we can find an element of B in between any two elements of R. 
that means if you are given any two elements of R A and B with A less than B then it should be possible to find an element of B in between A and B that means you should find an element X in B such that A less than X less than B. If it is possible to find such an X in B we say that B is dense in R. We have another theorem here which is named as the Archimedean property. It has two parts. Part 1 given any real number x element of R there exists an n element of n satisfying n greater than x. That means for any real number x we can find a natural number n such that n is greater than x. The second part is given any real number y greater than 0 then there exists an n element of capital N satisfying 1 by n less than y. So what the second part says is that given any positive real number y then there exists a natural number n such that 1 by n will be less than have a closer look at part 1. Given any real number x, there exists a natural number n satisfying n greater than x. So you are given any real number x, then you can find a natural number such that that natural number will be greater than x. So this is equivalent to saying that the set n of natural numbers is not bounded above. So to prove the first part, we have to prove that n is not bounded above. To prove this, we will use the method of contradiction. So we will assume that n is bounded above. Then by the axiom of completeness, n should have a least upper bound or a supremum. We will take this uh, supremum of n as alpha. Let alpha is equal to supremum of n. So alpha is the supremum of n means any number less than alpha is not an upper bound because supremum means the least upper bound. So alpha is the least upper bound means any number less than alpha is not an upper bound. So alpha minus 1 will not be an upper bound for the set n. So alpha minus 1 is not an upper bound for the set n means that there exists an element n in capital N such that that N will be greater than alpha minus 1 as alpha minus 1 is a is not an upper bound. So this means that alpha minus 1 is less than N. So if you move this minus 1 to the other side you will get alpha is less than N plus 1. Now you have taken N to be an element of the set of natural numbers. So N is a small n is a natural number. If small n is a natural number, small n plus 1 is also a natural number which is an element of n. So now, now what you got is that alpha is less than some element of the set of natural numbers n. This is a contradiction because we have assumed that alpha is the supremum of n. So alpha should be greater than or equal to every element of n. As you got alpha less than n plus 1, this contradicts our assumption that alpha is equal to supremum of n. And this contradiction is because of our wrong assumption that n is bounded above. So, hence we get that n is not bounded above. This means or this implies the first part. That means given any x element of R, there exists an n element of n satisfying n greater than x. Now, to prove the second part for y greater than 0, there exists an n element of n satisfying 1 by n less than y. Now, in the first part, we got that for x element of r, there exists an n element of n satisfying n greater than x. Now, we replace x with uh, 1 by y where y is greater than 0. When we do that, we will get for any real number y greater than 0, there exists n element of n satisfying n greater than 1 by y. 
Now we take the reciprocal on both sides. So the reciprocal of n is a 1 by n and the reciprocal of 1 by y is y. As we are taking the reciprocal, this inequality will reverse. That means greater than will become less than. So you will get 1 by n is less than y for all real numbers y greater than 0. And this proves part 2. Here we have our next theorem. Density of Q in R. Look at the statement. For every two real numbers A and B, with A less than B, there exists a rational number R satisfying A less than R less than B. So look at the statement once again. For every two real numbers A and B, that means for every A, B element of the set of real numbers R, with a less than b, there exists a rational number r. That means r is an element of set of rational numbers q, satisfying a less than r less than b. So for every a b element of r with a less than b, there exists a rational number or there exists R element of Q satisfying A less than R less than B. So this is equivalent to saying that the set Q of rational numbers is dense in R by the definition of a dense set. So here you are given A less than B. We have to show that there exists a rational number R. I call it m by n such that a less than m by n less than b where m is an element of z that means set of integers and n is an element of the set of natural numbers. Now you are given a is less than b. a less than b means b minus a will be positive. b minus a is greater than 0. Now by the Archimedean property for a real number y greater than 0, there exists a natural number small n such that 1 by n is less than y. Now here we have b minus a is greater than 0. b minus a is a real number which is greater than 0. Then by applying the Archimedean property, there exists a natural number n such that 1 by n is less than b minus a. This is by the Archimedean property just replacing y with b minus a. So if you take this minus a to this side and 1 by n to this side, you will get a is less than b minus 1 by n. Mark it as an equation. Mark it as equation number 1. I am marking it as equation number 16. Now choose an integer m in such a way that m is the smallest integer greater than n a. That means m minus 1 less than or equal to n a less than m m is the smallest integer greater than n a. That means m i the integer m minus 1 can be less than or equal to n a. So you will get m minus 1 less than or equal to n a less than m. Now from here you will get a is less than m by n. Mark it as the next equation. Now again from here we will have m less than or equal to n a plus 1. Now from equation number 16 you have a less than b minus 1 by n and if I apply it here you will get this is less than n into a to be replaced by b minus 1 by n plus this 1. If you take this n inside you will get n b minus 1 plus 1. And minus 1 and plus 1 will get deleted to give you nb. So what you got is that you got m is less than nb. So if I divide both sides with n, you will get m by n is less than b. So from this equation, equation number 19, and from 18, 18 is a less than m by n and 19 is m by n less than b. If you combine both, you will get a less than m by n less than b, which was the required result. So what we have proved that is that 
in between two real numbers a and b, there exists a rational number m by n such that a is less than m by n less than b. So this proves that the set of rational numbers q is dense in the set of real numbers r. We have already discussed this. The above theorem can be paraphrased by saying that q is dense in r. So this theorem can be restated as q is dense in r. Here we have a corollary for this theorem. Given any two real numbers a less than b, there exists an irrational number t such that a less than t less than b. So look at the corollary carefully. Given any two real numbers a less than b, there exists an irrational number t that means t is an element of i and a and b are elements of r satisfying a less than t less than b. So this statement is equivalent to saying that the set of irrational numbers i is dense in r. Now to prove this we will make use of the theorem which we have proved just now which states that the set of rational numbers q is dense in r. That means in between any two real numbers a and b with a less than b we can find a rational number satisfying a less than r less than b. Now to prove this we will make use of the theorem which we have just proved which says that the set of rational numbers q is dense in the set of real numbers r which means that in between any two real numbers a and b with a less than b you can find a rational number r such that a less than r less than b. Now since a and b are real numbers we know that a minus root 2 and b minus root 2 are also real numbers because uh, a is a real number root 2 is a real number so the difference of two real numbers will be a real number similarly b minus root 2 is also a real number now since a is less than b a minus root 2 will be less than b minus root 2 now here we have two real numbers a minus root 2 and b minus root 2 with the condition that a minus root 2 is less than b minus root 2. Then by the theorem q is dense in r, we will get a rational number r such that a minus root 2 is less than r less than b minus root 2. Now what we do is we add root 2 in the three parts of this inequality. So we will get add root 2 here, add a root 2 here and we will add a root 2 here. So from here you will get a, from here you will get r plus root 2, from here you will get b. So you will get a less than r plus root 2 less than b. Now r plus root 2, r is a rational number and root 2 is an irrational number. So when you sum it r plus root 2 will be an irrational number. So taking this r plus root 2 as t, we will get a less than t less than b. That means in between two real numbers a and b, we got an irrational number t satisfying a less than t less than b and which proves our corollary that the set of irrational numbers i is dense in the set of real numbers r.